Tonight I'm going to speak about a uh, wet rotor pump, or a wet, wet rotor motor, however you want to look at it. It's typically found on aquarium pumps and other small pumps, but this one in particular came from a dishwasher. I've already taken the fasteners out, so it'll be easy to disassemble. But, before I start, let me talk about what typically goes wrong on these things. This is a dishwasher pump. If your dishwasher w works normally, but will not pump out water, this is going to be the problem. It's the wastewater pump. You can find it by pulling your dishwasher out and tracing the drain hose back to this point. If something's wrong with it, it's usually going to be a clog in this assembly, this white part here. And uh, what causes that is stuff getting caught up against the rotor itself. There's usually not going to be anything wrong with the coils or the electrical connections because there's just not much that can fail. If it is not clogged up, then you may want to pull the pump motor rotor assembly out and check the bearings and make sure there's no hair or anything else wrapped around the shaft. Another thing you could check is you can check the breaker. There's a little thermal break inside of this hold on, let's see if I can get my there we go, inside of this cover here. When you pull this cover out it's nothing but a shield to cover up and protect the coils and the breaker assembly and the plug prongs. If you pull out this piece in the center here, this is a thermal breaker. It's just a bimetal thermostat, essentially, that if it gets too hot inside of here, this will break the contact between the coils and the power supply. There's a, they usually do not fail, but if they do, if you check continuity and find none, it's probably going to be this part here. Let's pull the motors, the uh, pump and rotor assembly apart. There were fasteners here, here, and here. When I pop it apart, you'll see that this is nothing but the pump chamber. Water comes in here, water goes out here. This prevents sewer gas and sludge from going back into your dishwasher and smelling it up. Now, a word of caution. If you find yourself needing to disassemble a pump like this from a dishwasher, it's in a dishwasher. There's going to be a lot of nasty gunk in there. You can see there's still some crud on it, on the assembly fittings. So, wear gloves, disinfect it. You, you'll you'll be happy for it. All right. So looking at the moving parts, or the moving part, to be quite honest, there's just one part. You can see that it spins pretty much freely. It does cog, and that's because that magnet in there makes it jerk back and forth. So to get that off. You pull this face plate off, like so, and pull it loose. It's going to be a little bit of a tight fit because that's a magnet. It's trying to pull itself down inside of there. Okay. If there are no strings or crud or anything wrapped around this and it spins freely, then your motor's probably still good. Now, why is it called? A wet rotor pump. Well, because moisture and water is allowed to get in there. You can see there's little spacers around the edges here, around this, this flange, and that allows water to actually get down inside of there and lubricate the bearings. And it's nothing but metal on plastic, and it's probably a glass reinforced polymer, but it's still just uh, plastic. And that allows the pump to work properly. Now, again, there's just not much that can go wrong with this pump. It is very easy to assemble and disassemble. Let's see if I can... There's a little clip there on both sides that I'll have to get apart. Now, I'm going to keep this pump because, again, like I said, there's just not much that can go wrong with it, and it's probably still good. But that's it. That's all there is to that pump. The coils, 
and the magnet. And they sit inside of that protective plastic sheath to prevent moisture from making it to the electrical contacts. And that's probably why they used it in here is to because it's so bulletproof of an assembly. So if you find yourself with a uh, dishwasher that will not drain properly, this is where you want to check. You just want to pull it apart, clean it thoroughly, and double check that breaker, that thermal breaker right there, to make sure that it's still in good shape. And if you suspect that breaker, there's actually a way you can bypass it. Now I do not recommend at all to run it without that breaker in place because if it gets hot it could cause a fire. But you can bypass this breaker by running a wire from here to here or cutting it and soldering it together. Now the only reason that you should do that is to test your motor to make sure there is absolutely nothing wrong with this. Say a mouse or something got in there and uh, chewed the wires or whatever. It's not likely to happen, but it is possible. If that your motor turns with that gone, then your breaker is at fault and you'll have to replace it. But they're very inexpensive and they are surely cheaper than buying a new pump. So that's it. Nothing to it. And I'm going to put this back together and put it out in the shop because from outward appearances and uh, this is still a good pump and uh, I should be able to just hook it straight up to uh, power and uh, get a working pump out of the deal and the only thing being wrong was the breaker was blown. That's it. Good night.